Step 3. Other protocols. In this step, we're going to look at blind quantum computation with protocols that are other than the BFK. Let's look at the first one, and it's called measurement only BQC, or measurement only blind quantum computation. This protocol was proposed by Morimae and Fuji, and it works in the following way. Here, the server prepares a universal resource state, for example, a cluster state, and rather than keeping it, the server sends the state to the client qubit by qubit. And the client is capable of doing single qubit measurements and just basically runs normal MBQC on the qubits received from the server. This is the setting. Really, it's just the MBQC scheme where the server is used to prepare the initial resource state. So the pre server prepares the cluster state and then sends it qubit by qubit to the client, who is then running the MBQC using its measurement device and updating uh, the measurement angles of future measurements. There's very nice property for, to this protocol, and that is that it's trivially blind. The communication is one way only. Only the server sends the qubits to the client. The client never reveals the uh, uh, angles at which uh, the client is measuring the qubits. Therefore, the server has no way of finding out anything about the computation, or in fact the input or the output. Integrity of the data can be guaranteed as well, and it's done in the following way. So the client needs to check that the server is following the instructions, and in this protocol, the instruction is very similar. There's only one, and it says, prepare a cluster state, please. That's all. So the client needs to check that the prepared state is indeed a cluster state. And that can be achieved with the help of stabilizer measurements. What are stabilizer measurements, or what are stabilizer operators? They are multi-qubit Pauli operators, K, and they have the following property. We say that the state psi is stabilized by the stabilizer K if it is its plus one eigenstate. Written mathematically, when we apply K, the stabilizer operator, to the state psi, we don't change the state psi. Graph states are stabilizer states, meaning that they can be generated with these following stabilizer operators. Here, let's break it down. GJ is the stabilizer operator associated with qubit J of the graph state. And the form of the stabilizer operator is given as follows. We apply the Pauli X operation on the qubit J, and this expression over here means that we are applying Pauli Z to all the neighbors of qubit J. Let's demonstrate it with a few examples. Let's take a two qubit cluster state G2. It can be represented by the following graph. We've got two vertices, one and two, connected by a single edge. The stabilizer operator associated with qubit 1, G1, is the following. We apply x on the qubit 1, and we apply z on qubit 2. So it's x1 tensor z2. The stabilizer operator associated with qubit 2, again, we apply x to that qubit, so it's x2, and then we apply z to the first qubit. So g2 is given by z1 tensor x2. Let's look at a more complicated uh, example. For example, a four qubit graph state G4. We've got a following graph representing our graph state, and these are the four stabilizer operators. For G1, we apply x to the first qubit and z to all of its neighbors. Now, the neighborhood of one, uh, qubit 1 is given by qubits 2, qubits 3, and qubit 4, so we apply z to all of them. So G1 is equal to x1, tensor z2, tensor z3, tensor z4. Similarly, we do this thing to all of the other uh, qubits and find their stable up as operators, g2, g3, and g4. And as we mentioned, if we apply these stabilizer operators to the state, for example here g2, then we get g2 back. We don't change anything about the state. So let's get back how we can use this to test that the server is really preparing a cluster state. We, like we said, when we apply um, stabilizer operator associated with qubit j to the cluster state, we are not changing the cluster state. The cluster state is the plus one eigenstate of the stabilizer gj, meaning 
that the expectation value of a stabilizer measurement on qubit j, if the state is truly, truly a cluster state, is just one. And we can use this to check the integrity of the data and verify the op um, operation or the state prepared by a quantum server. So if the state is really a cluster state, then sta stabilizer measurements will always result in a plus one outcome. For example, here we have a cluster state where the user can check the following uh, stabilizer measurement on this red qubit. That means it needs to measure that qubit in the x basis and its neighboring qubit, qubits given by these orange dots, in the z basis. And if the parity of these measurements, in other words, if the product of the measurement outcomes is plus one, then the outcome of the stabilizer measurement, measurement is also plus one. So what the server needs to do is needs to prepare multiple copies of the cluster state, where one copy will be used for computation, and all the other copies can be used for verification and to guarantee integrity of data. This concludes the measurement-only BQC. We are briefly going to mention a few other protocols, such as the following hybrid protocol. This is a hybrid between the BFK and measurement-only. What the client can do is prepare the desired qubit states remotely. This can be achieved with the help of pre-shared bell pairs between the client and the server. So for every qubit that the client would like to either send to uh, the server to be part of the brickwork state, they need to share one bell pair. So the client measures its uh, part of the bell pair in the following basis. This basis is again in the xy plane of the block sphere at this uh, particular angles that we used before in the BFK protocol. What this does, it remotely prepares the qubits on the server side and because the client is not revealing the measurement basis, it hides the input state that is prepared on the side of the quantum server. And after that, the client proceeds with the usual uh, BFK protocol, which we discussed in step two. Nice feature of this hybrid protocol is that photon loss is not a big deal anymore. Here, the client and server can keep trying until all qubits are prepared remotely. So even if we lose some photons during the distribution of the entangled bell pairs, we just have to try again. This is not true for measurement-only protocol, where each qubit, if it gets lost, it ruins the quantum computation. And the last protocol that we're going to mention is for a two-server protocol. Here we have two quantum servers, server 1 and server 2, that share bell pairs. And client is communicating with both server 1 and server 2. The nice feature about this scenario is that the client can this time be fully classical. The client doesn't need to prepare any qubit states and it doesn't need to measure any qubit states. And here the insight is gained from the hybrid protocol. So what the client can do is it can instruct server 1 to remotely prepare um, states on server 2, meaning it sends some bases of measurement that are performed on these qubits, which collapses these qubits into um, states in the xy plane of the block sphere, and then again BFK protocol can be applied. One crucial assumption is that the servers must be non-communicating with each other. If they can communicate, then server 1 can simply send the bases to server 2. That way server 2 will learn information about the input states, the computation, as well as the output. So there are a few strong assumptions needed to ensure both blindness and integrity of data. We can have the scenario where we have two servers, but a huge number of bell pairs. So this incurs big overhead in terms of how much entanglement the servers need to share. Or if we're trying to reduce the number of bell pairs shared between the servers, we have to increase the number of servers. And the crucial one is the non-communication assumption, which we mentioned already. This might work for few servers and short times, but it's pretty practically impossible to ensure for arbitrarily long quantum com computations. And that concludes our discussion of other uh, blind quantum computation protocols.